Now I've got to assemble the film advance on this camera. Everything else is ready to go. So, we'll start with the advance shaft. And first I've got to apply some lubricant to this. We want plenty on that spring. That's the return spring for the film advance. That needs to be running fairly smoothly. I'll pull this back and make sure I get plenty on the shaft where it's going to run back through that bush. I'll work that a few times, make sure that's well worked in. The end of the spring, you have to make sure it fits into the slot here, otherwise it uh, won't all go together. Apply a little bit more grease here. Make sure that spring's well lubricated. And now it can go in the body. Open the back of the camera. We want our sprocket, our film uh, take up spool rather, and the bush. The bush goes in there, into the base of it, not the end with the drive dog slot. And drop it into the body there. And this shaft should just pretty much drop in. I've made sure I've got my holes on this plate aligned with the holes on this plate so I can feed the screws through. That's slotted in there. That normally goes to the end of the camera. Sometimes you need to position it a third of a turn out to get a bit more tension. I'll pull that arm back out of the way. And it should drop back into place. Sometimes it doesn't drop in. Sometimes the spring has come out of the slot and it's stopping it from travelling up and through that bush. But that's good, that's all where it needs to be. So there are three screws, nickel plated, fresh from the cleaner, they're nice and clean. If you're hunting out those screws to see which ones they were, they'll be the ones without the glue, but usually they've got plenty of grease on them. One. Don't mix them up with the chrome screws from the top cover. It's a long way to dig back into the camera to get them back if you want them. So they're all in. I'll just make sure they're snug. That's good. You can see how the end of film lever here drops down into that slot and locks this thing. Normally when it's not at number one it sits up here and allows that to move freely. Alright, to the top of the camera. What I have to assemble here is the clutch. That goes in first, and I haven't got the grease for that here, so I'm going to go away and get it. Okay, well I found the grease. I've smeared it in there. It's very black, thick molybdenum grease that I use for that. I found it works well. So the spring fits onto the centre, and it has to hook into that slot there. Now, this is the tricky bit. We've got to keep it hooked up. See how it's sprung out like that? That's because it's a much bigger diameter when it's released. I'm rotating that in the pliers to keep it bound in. And then the drum can go over the top. And with a bit of luck, 
We'll take away our pliers and it'll fall into place. Well, it didn't, of course, but that's, it will do with a touch. All right, and there's our clutch. And it runs smoothly in one direction. Well, that one's running even reasonably smoothly in the other direction. Usually they run smoothly in one direction and not very happy the other way. Doesn't matter. They only need to slip in one direction. Back to the camera. So I apply a little bit of grease to the centre. It slips down over the shaft. And it should revolve, revolve with your fingers until it drops down into the slots on the top of the film uh, take-up spool. And that's it. That's done. Next component is this, which acts as a guide to the top of the film advanced shaft, carries the gear where it couples to the um, sprocket wheel. This couples the drive from the sprocket wheel to the take-up spool. So I'm just putting some grease in there, working it in. A little bit in the centre. That can drop into place. Normally you have to give the take-up spool a bit of a spin with your fingers just to make that gear drop in and engage. The screws here are two. We have this, tape, this post here. That shoulder screw supports the rack. That sits over here. So I'll put it in. Don't do it up tight, just snug. And at this side, that's the little ratchet piece. So first of all, there's a little spacer. Now the spacer is countersunk on one side. You want that countersunk facing down, not up. There's our ratchet. Flick that over. Here's our spring. Just line it up with the hole. Alright, so I'll start that screw. I need to make sure that that spring stays over the screw in the slot behind this tab so it's spring loaded there should be sufficient clearance in there that even when that's done up tight that ratchet is still free against its return spring right now I can tighten that up and the next component is this major drive gear here. So I want a smear of grease in there and in the centre. If I rotate it that way, it'll drop in past the ratchet. Checking the alignment here. That's good. Normally I line this thing up straight, pointing straight ahead. Here's the spring. That dog clutch. I usually give that a tiny smear of grease because after the cleaner there's absolutely no oil on that. It will rust otherwise. This drops on. That piece goes in So it's bent up upwards in the sides. This just drops on. There's the drive dog. 
drops over the post that's better there's the washer and here is the drive that's the gear that couples to the cocking rack here's the screw excuse me And if I very gently do this, I'll be able to do it without disturbing anything and get that screw all up tight while the end of film lock there holds the shaft from turning at the bottom. And it does. So far so good. So what we have to do now is put in the rewind lever button, rewind button, and it's return spring and washer. This little lever here, this lever here locks the rewind button in position. So I normally tiny smear of molybdenum grease on the inside as a lubricant more on the end. This is where it contacts the film advance here that's and that's where it's under load so that's what that goes in under there its return spring sits here we get the screw in for that and then we've got to hook the return spring into place. The screw is stepped. So do that up. I can feel it catching on that piece so it's not centered up. Still not centered up. Ooh, that's better. Now I can do that up tight. The spring. The spring needs to come over to here, so I'm going to hook it up with my pliers and then I pop it behind there. That's good. It's sprung loaded. Open the back. Let's close that. We want our sprocket there. That drops into that position. Here's its shaft. A little bit of grease there. That's where the sprocket will revolve on it. A little bit of grease at the bottom. You can see the, the shiny part there where it revolves and rubs. Normally I'll put a little bit here on the teeth. Just for good measure. That slides in from the top. That slides in here. Need to guide it through that take up spool. A sprocket rather. It's reluctant. There we go. That's better. Holding my finger on it to press it back up through the casting, I flick that lever across. Now that's that allows it to come up. That's trapped behind there. If I re if it's not aligned, I just revol revolve this spool here, and that'll bring it up to its maximum height. That's where the gears are fully engaged at the top. That's its normal driving position. Alright, so on here is a washer. It's a heavy washer. It doesn't look like any of the others. Here's our spring. And here is the button. And they screw in through that washer. 
Now it should pass through the middle of the washer so you can check with your fingers to make sure that button bounces. If it doesn't bounce it means you've got it up tight against the washer and you have to shift it. Normally I hold my thumb against the sprocket wheel to stop it running away, get my special pliers and I can just turn that up tight. Whoops, that's just revolving in space. Something's forgotten here. What have I done? Oh, I know. We need to put a little screw in there to lock that to the shaft. Here we go. That's that little screw. The one that looks just the same as the ones that act as the door hinge. And that's where it needs to be. So I had my thumb against the sprocket wheel but of course it was doing nothing. The film sprocket was just turning nice and smoothly on that well lubricated shaft. Right, so now we're in business. You can hold that sprocket wheel with my thumb, give that a turn until my thumb hurts and I know it's up tight. Now as I revolve the film advance sprocket take up spool you'll see that the film sprocket revolves too. But if you hold your thumb on the sprocket, the film take-up spool, you can revolve the sprocket because the clutch is slipping. You can feel the clutch slip. That's what allows you to rewind the film. That clutch is slipping and allowing you to, it to revolve backwards. Alright, that part's good. On to the next part. Right, next I'm going to put the chrome trim on the top. That's the piece there. That's the one we had through the cleaner. It's not my dirty old test piece that I had on while I was putting the leatherettes on. That just sits on the top. It's held in place with this bracket, or the uh, strap lug. As you can see, that strap lug is somewhat bent. I promised I was going to straighten that, so I better see what I can do. don't want to mark that so make sure that you've got smooth jaws on your pliers I'm just checking that to look at the shape of it one side's really good the other side not so that's pretty good it's fairly square All right so there are two screws for this Long ones, roundish heads, not that one though. Let's pop that shaft up so I can see. That's better. This bracket should sit square with the end of the camera. And it's got quite a bit of slop in there. You can move it around quite a bit to adjust it. So set it square with the end of the camera. Tighten those screws up. And if it's not quite 100% we can come back and deal with that later. That's good. And that keeps that chrome trim in place so that it'll be there when we come back. Right, so we've got to put the cocking rack in now. Let's just check something before we do that. Where's my rubber band before I get into deep trouble? That's right, don't want that getting away. It would cause me grief. Okay, so that spring's trying to get over the top. I don't want that. We're going to tension this because at the moment it's just neutral. It's not under any tension and so there'd be no tension to rewind to bring the take up 
bring the uh, film advance shaft back to position. So, what do I want to do? Well, the end of film lock lever, I want that up out of the way, so I'll flip it up, push it to the back. Our release lever here, I want that out of the way, so I'll push it back, and the advance shaft, I'm going to rotate one full turn. I'll drop my end of film lock lever back into place. And that's tensioned. Now as long as I don't touch any of the buttons on the top, it'll stay tensioned too. So a bit of grease on our cocking rack. Special attention to the teeth and then position it. If it doesn't want to drop into position, that means the teeth aren't lined up and you just rotate, put your finger on here, rotate that gear slightly, it'll just drop in. That's it, it's dropped into position. Now here we've got just two teeth engaged. That's, that looks fine. There's a little bit of a clearance at the back here, so it's not right against the housing. That's fine too. That looks very good to me. There's a bracket now that goes across here and holds that down in place. And it should be in front of me, but of course I can't see it. There it is. Hiding. That bracket sits on that way. The middle position has the long post through it. And the long post I have a special screwdriver for grips the flats. That goes there. I don't need to do that up really tight. There's one screw that goes in here, round head, not too big. Not too long rather. That's the chrome one, so it's not that one. Nickel plated, that's some. That goes there. I'm checking that this bracket is nice and square. Do that screw up tight. Snug this one up. And our strap lug at this end is what's wanted here now. Final check to make sure that screw was done up tight, and it was. Two screws here. One of them, the countersunk screw goes there. And the other screw I want, I don't immediately, oh, I know why I don't immediately see the other screw. It's because it was missing. Somebody had taken this screw from here and put it here. And the original screw from here was gone. Right, back in a second. You have to have a good supply of spares if you're in this trade. It's one of those. That screw goes there. Make sure they're down tight. And then flip the camera over. Well, nothing much can get away now. That spring should be tucked down there. I'm not sure why it's so keen to get away. I 
I'll pop this under the end of the camera so that the levers aren't being pressed on. If they're being pressed on, they'll pop up. It'll keep releasing those components. So I'll put a little bit of grease either side of those two lever points. Now, yeah, some on the ratchet. And some I'll drop in there, pull it up under there. That's for the ratchet on the underside. That piece looks fine. So now we need the cover plate. Here's our chrome plate. Seven screws. Nickel plated. And nice and clean from the cleaner. Well, comparatively clean from the cleaner. I didn't get the thrashing that the other mechanical parts got. That one just hit the floor. Have to be picked up. I'll put one in for good measure because I want to fit the advanced lever at this point. The advanced lever sits on here. You have three long screws. Get one in, get that lever back, that's fine. Two screws are enough to hold that for now. That's a bit tight. There's something odd there. Oh, the screw might be a bit rusted up. Right. So that lever's in place. At the top of the camera here. This component is the release lever. Press that down as you would do as you fired the shutter. It latches into position. This one is your end of film lock you just hold it down slightly to clear it allows us to move the advance if we let it up it's like it's at number one the advance is locked if we hold that down but we haven't depressed the release lever it still won't wind there we go press that down hold this down slightly beautiful that's all good I can finish closing up the bottom of the camera now. Everything's in place. The parts can't get lost. Another screw there. And then two more. One I dropped on the floor. And there's the other one. I don't want to be groveling on the floor looking for screws in the middle of the video. I'll just pull one from my spares right now. Well, before I was so rudely interrupted by the uh, camera's card full message, um, I did find another screw. I did get it in place. The chrome trim's all fine on the bottom of the camera. Now, if we hold down the lock button, it's just working lovely. And so, I'm going to think about what the next task might be on this camera. I can tell that screw's just slightly long, long there and will need adjustment. Anyway, that closes nicely. I've got to get ready for the next task. And the next task here, I think, will be to install the shutter.